So now we go back online to do the second part of the cut score development process and begin reviewing the performance assessment. So this time I'll click review a performance assessment. I will re-enter login information. Again, password is secure and case sensitive. Enter your last name and retype. You see the confidentiality agreement once again. Yes, you do need to accept it again. I agree. And go on to next. On the next screen, you'll see the information that you already entered when you did the written assessment. Check it over. Make sure everything's correct, which it should be, and hit next. Now we're ready to begin. The performance assessment ratings using ANGOF procedure that we talked about, it's a little different because this is where the students actually have to show that they know how to do some of the tasks involved in their occupation. There are three different screens that you will see on this one website. At the top part is the actual booklet that tells the student what they need to do. As I scroll down, you'll see in the lower right, it says evaluator. Some of you may have served as evaluators for the test in your um, job area. These will be the instructions that you have. So you could, there's a scroll button down here to tell you how you're to evaluate the tasks. What we're most concerned about for this activity is the ratings that you're going to give here. This is where you'll enter those ENGOF ratings, how you think that minimally competent job candidate will perform. So let's go back to the top for a minute. Here's the first task. Notice that it's job one, identification of account balances. It takes about five minutes. So the test taker, the student, will be given given these instructions. For each account listed, indicate the normal balance by placing a check mark in the appropriate debit or credit column. Place only one check mark for each account title. The list of accounts can be found in the form supplement booklet. Scroll down a bit. I want to make sure I get all up. Job one continued on next page. You've got to make sure that you read the entire task for that job. So here is the form that the students will use to record their answers. Accounts payable, accounts receivable, bad debt. So they need to classify. Now we get to the end of the job. So that's what the student needs to do. Let's scroll down and see what the evaluator has to do. Based on the job shown in the window above, make a rating for each of the criteria provided based on the rater training you've received for each item. Choose a letter A through E that best describes the likely performance of a minimally competent candidate. That mark then mark the corresponding letter for that item in the rating box over here provided on the screen. And here's a reminder of that minimally competent candidate. We've been talking about the minimally competent job candidate. Same thing. Entry-level employee who's able to perform duties in a safe and effective manner with an appropriate amount of new employee supervision. So that's your reminder. Let's go and look at job one to see how we're to evaluate these. Job one, one of two. What does that mean? Well, apparently for this job, identification of account balances where the student is supposed to identify whether something should be considered a debit or credit, That's going to be one part of it. So the way you evaluate this, thinking about that minimally competent candidate or that minimally competent job candidate, 
how do you think they're going to perform? Do you think they're going to make one, zero to one errors, two to three errors, four to five errors, six to seven errors, or more than seven errors? So you need to look at the task again, see how each of these is classified, and I'm going to say, you know what, I think that minimally competent candidate can probably get through this pretty quickly. They may be a little careless, being that they're an a entry-level employee, so I'm going to say B. That's my SME, my subject matter expert opinion, or my judgment based on what I know about the job and the definition of that minimally competent candidate. I think it's pretty easy, but they're going to make, they may make some mistakes. But this is one of two, and there's a second part here. So you're just going to simply scroll down. Here's the second part. Two of two, the time to complete job one. If you recall at the beginning of the job, it said students will have five minutes to do this. And every task in the performance assessment has a time limit. So the second judgment you will make on the first job is, do you think the participant can complete this within five minutes, or they will not be able to complete it within five minutes? I'm thinking it's fairly easy, and I think they can complete it, so I'm going to click A, which corresponds to they completed it within five minutes. Here you see the first example on this portion when you're evaluating performance that not all options will be available at all times. As you can see in the evaluator window, B, C, and D say do not use and there are no buttons there. Just like the written component where you had a come back later button in case you got that important phone call you had to take, it appears here again. So that's job one. How many jobs are there? For this particular NOCTI, there are seven. We just finished the first job that has two parts. Each of the seven jobs can have, and most likely will have, multiple parts. I'm going to click Next. Now my recording option is the first one that changes. And this has something to do with journal entries, job number two of seven. And there are 12 different things I need to rate for this job. So let's go up to the top and see what the student has to do. Scroll down. End of job one. OK, here's job two. It's about journal entries. Maximum completion time, 45 minutes. The student is to do multiple things. Let's work through a couple of these. You're employed as a bookkeeper at a particular business. Ten routine source documents are reproduced on pages 8 to 15, and that's 8 to 15 on this document. Sales discounts are not offered. Journal totals are not required. General journal entries must include an explanation. Let's continue on. A partial list of accounts is provided for this business. These are some of the accounts. Let's go on to the next page. Here is a form. Looks like a memo. Please note that on particular date, I took plumbing merchandise equaling $2,000 for use at home. Make the appropriate entry to record this withdrawal. Let's scroll down and see what I need to do with that. Going to back to the evaluator. Here is the beginning of job two journal entries. And again, it gives you the same warning I didn't notice, but once you're online, you will. Um, you 
don't count the same error twice. So for number one, based on form one, which we saw above, you are going to fill in the A if you think the participant meets all six checklist criteria. What are those criteria? They're right here beside you on that same screen. Correct journal chosen, date entered, debit correct, account title, credit correct, account title, correct amounts entered, journal explanation entered. Do you think they're going to meet all six? You would click A. Five of them would be B and so forth. I'm going to click B for this one. That was the first score for the second job. I'm going to go down and see what the second one is. Now it's Form 2 we're looking at. What's Form 2? This was Form 1, and you can always scroll back and forth. Here's Form 2. So how are they going to record, whoops, sorry about that. How are they going to record this form? Again, now we have a checklist with five criteria. I'm going to say A. I think they'll get that one. Move on to the third part. Same thing. This is a different form. Remember up above when we looked at the directions for the student booklet, it talked about multiple forms they would have to look at and enter. Let's go back and see this for a second. Ten routine source documents are reproduced on pages 8 to 15 of the performance booklet. So they're going to have ten of these they're going to have to enter. I am just going to randomly, and you will not do this, you will do this with your subject matter expert hat on understanding what a minimally competent job candidate would know and be able to do in a safe and effective manner on their first day. Job six, uh, sorry, form six, form seven, form eight, form nine, form ten. With many of these, depending upon the occupation, of course, you will have some judgments to make at the end of each job as indicated on the evaluator in the evaluator window. Um, many of them are about legibility and guess what the last one's going to be. It's going to be about time and that's very typical for a lot of the jobs on the NOCTI. Question 11 though is about legibility. These students, remember this is the accounting basics, so other people are going to have to read their writing in a written ledger. So for 11 you're going to need to evaluate whether all the entries were legible, some of the entries were legible, entries were not legible or were not complete. I think that minimally competent job candidate on that first day of the job is going to know how important it is to write clearly. I'm going to say yes, that's, it's, they, all of them will be legible. And the final portion for the second job is participants completed job two within the 45 minutes. I believe that minimally competent candidate can do that. So now we've done two of the jobs. The other jobs all work the same. When I click next, you can see every time the, eva the rating window comes up in the lower left-hand corner. I need to make my ratings how? By going up to the student window, scrolling down and seeing what we're going to have to scroll through these ten forms. 
scrolling down and seeing what the third job is. So everything you need to do this is right here online. This one takes a little bit of adjustment to get used to the three screens. Here's job three, 15 minutes, tells the student what they need to do. I'm going to go to the evaluator window and get that all set up. End of job two here. There we go, beginning of job three. So now I have my instructions that tell me what each bubble, A, B, C, and D, if they're available, stands for for each one. When you are completely done, and on this one, I'm just going to leave it blank for now so that this particular demonstration does not last for an hour or more. I anticipate it will take you at least an hour to go through this. I don't want you to speed up. I want you to take your time. Think about that minimally competent candidate. Think of yourself on that very first day of the job. Think of students nowadays. What would they do? What do you think that minimally competent job candidate performance would do with this task? Remember, they don't have the experience you have. These are new employees. When you are completely done and everything is filled in, you have the choices of going to the previous screen, coming back later, you got that important phone call, or submit your review. Unlike the written portion where you had the summary page and you can see which questions you completed and which ones were still incomplete on the performance, you don't have that summary screen. Once you're all done, you will submit your review. Are you sure you want to submit it? Yes. And you are done. How Ever. When you do the, re the review of a performance assessment, you must complete every single question on every single job. Otherwise, we've wasted our time. We won't be able to calculate a cut score. So that concludes the demonstration on how you do the performance assessment. Next, you will receive a quiz online to check your understanding.